I want you to put your hands together. There goes the neighborhood. And welcome him to the stage. Big round of applause. There goes the neighborhood. Alrighty, alrighty. Welcome back to the Smokescreen Podcast. I'm your host. <laughs> I was gonna go with something different again. But I forgot Snoopy. <laughs> I'm Woodstock. <laughs> No, uh, welcome back, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is episode 16, I think, and uh, we got a doozy today. Yes, we got we a do. doozy. We got something we talked about doing for a few weeks now. But really quick, first, let me thank our Patreons. I have opened up, as I mentioned last podcast, a Patreon account, a separate one for this podcast, to get it all separated from the main channel and fair for James and all that. So I want to quickly thank Bill. Thank you to Ewan of Rohan. Thank you to Lydia Quinn. Thank you to Slope. Thank you to Sneaky McCheese. <laughs> I love the name Sneaky McCheese. And Tanya Greatless, as well as our two executive producers, Doc Holliday and Lauren Wagstaff. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate the support. Uh, we are now over guys. the little threshold to actually pay for the podcast. So anything from this here on out will just help us out. And we thank you guys so much for that. Really appreciate it. But yes, yeah, so today... <laughs> We talked about this, I think, a couple months ago, but never got around to it. We're going to give some advice, like for real. Yeah. We're going to have fun with it, but we're going to give advice. And since we didn't have, like, questions ready for, you know, we didn't announce it in some previous podcast, we found a website here, and I believe it is uh, Deer Hoopers. So it's DeerHoopers.com, where it's, a, it's basically a, an advice column. Yes. Like you'd see, you know, Dear Abby or whatever in the old days. I guess Is Dear Abby still around? I don't even know. Is that still a thing? I wonder myself. Yeah, because, I mean, that's the most famous, I think, that people are probably uh, aware of, Dear Abby columns or whatever. It was in every newspaper in the country probably. And now there's probably an online version, I'd imagine. And I think we've lived long enough to give some advice. I know? think so. I think so. We We have to say, you know. There, these are all kinds of questions revolving around relationships and money and, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. We're not professionals. We're just not at all. we're just a, a few a couple older dudes. We're two rednecks with a microphone and a little bit of experience. That's exactly two rednecks and a microphone. <laughs> no, no. And, we, um, and yeah, so yeah, this is not professional advice. We have to say this apparently. I guess. Yeah, I, guess, I think we should. Say well, that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, we're going to have fun with it, but give serious answers. So we found this website and went through and looked at a lot of the questions and and this should c cover the gambit i think a lot of stuff and uh i think um we didn't read the answers that's i was getting ready to say that. yeah yeah we intentionally did not want to read their answers to these people so we wouldn't be influenced so what you're getting from us is raw unfiltered exactly our own genuine sincere advice which, which fits the theme of this podcast this is raw this is unedited we don't edit anything we just put in the intro and it's out that's it so Anyway, th we think this will be fun, and if you if you enjoy this, for damn sure, in the YouTube comments, leave us questions. Yeah, and, uh, and you know, and I'm not saying uh, you know this could go for younger folks out there. This can go for people our age with a different experience. You know, I think it'd be fun. Uh, we've been, I think, collectively we have eighty something years here of experience. Yes, we do, and uh, both with uh, relationships, marriage, and kids, and all this good stuff, and and. Right. Uh, Anyway, it'll be fun regardless, um, and, and so, yeah, feel free to do that. And quickly, a reminder, uh, I mention YouTube all the time. That's where you can read all the comments, so please go subscribe to the YouTube channel. The link's in the description of everywhere that you, that you may listen to this on, whether it's SoundCloud, Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, or Podbean. Uh, you can go to the YouTube channel from there, and we read the comments. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do more of these if we get some questions, Seri like seriously. Right. Like, and is there a way that... Could could they possibly email us? Uh, yeah, these yeah. Questions? Um, that way, you yeah. know, other people aren't answering their question on the comments. Yeah, section. yeah. You, if if that's uh, you know, because certainly some of these may want to be um, anonymous. Yep. But uh, yeah, there is a in the description of YouTube. There is an email address there. Smokescreen at LockmoreProductions dot com. You can always email with that as well, and just you know put the subject you know podcast um, advice or something. Yeah, that would be really cool. Um, and I'll see that. So yeah, you can certainly feel free to do that if you want to. That'll be fine too. But if it's more of a general question, you can leave it there. Whatever sure. you want to do, and and be sure to let us know 
if you want to, you know, have your name involved or not. Definitely. Or, or just, you know, just it could be just a first name. That's whatever, you know, it, just to maintain your privacy if you actually have a legit question. Right. Uh, again, again, assuming this goes well, we'll see. That's what I'm wondering, too. So we had this website here. We advice. pulled these questions from, right, and uh, it kept refreshing. So we have a lot of screenshots. We had to, to read them. Yeah, so you have to with us. you have to bear with us, and some of them are not written that well. I think they really just copy and paste an email, uh, and so some of them are not worded that great. But anyway, I don't know. You want to go first? Read the I'm first excited. one. You ready? Let, let's go. Let's right. jump in. Let let's give glasses on. Uh, Chris and James therapy and advice sessions. I'm not sure what we're calling this yet, but this is a new segment we're going to try out here, and uh, and see what we have. Real I'm just real advice. Ear to ear. I'm so excited <laughs> about this. Yes, uh, let's, let's see what we have first. We have okay. uh, probably eight or eight or ten good ones that carry the gambit. All right, so here we go. Get ready. It says, I've been in a relationship with this guy for over four years now, and I know communication is the ultimate key to a healthy and strong bond. Good start. There are certain <laughs> topics that I'm not comfortable with, and my boyfriend likes to bring up to our conversations mildly often. His ex-girlfriends mostly, as well as this other girl that got me into nearly ending our relationship. I've talked to him about it, and he says that he doesn't understand why I get so mad whenever he brings any of these topics to the table. We once had this huge, horrible fight that ended up in him saying how frustrating it was to be constantly having to take great care into every word he speaks, or else I will get insanely mad. <clears throat> he said it was really mentally exhausting and that I should act a little more mature than to start a fight over little things. Sometimes I feel like I am overreacting, but some others, I repeat to myself that if it bothers me, it's, it is worth speaking up. He also shields himself up, saying that he has explained to me a billion times that he is done with all of those girls, and that I should really cut the crap on those topics. I fear that this is kind of a big deal. I love him so much, but I can't stand him constantly bringing these girls up into our conversations and having to suck it up and act like I don't care, because I really do. Your words will be truly appreciated. Thanks, XO. Yeah, this is this is interesting. Um, it really it, is. It's interesting because I can, can, I can see both sides of some of them. And by the way, these are some of the longer questions. Some are not that long, but yes. I mean, right. they, these are in-depth, obviously detailed questions from specific people to this, uh, this website, which is probably ran by professionals. <laughs> but uh, I will start with that one to say, uh, her, well, her, I'll just agree with you first off that as soon as I read it, I thought the first thing you said is that I can see both sides of this. Yes, so, uh, absolutely. So yeah, her her right feelings are absolutely valid. Yeah, um, they're valid because you 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 know you don't you're hearing about exes. Yeah, that's tough, and that's a tough spot to be in. And kind of just to cover those two points, just to, before we get into a deep, is at the same time. She's got to be less sensitive to where if he's saying he feels like he has to start dancing around things or, you know, tiptoeing on egg, the proverbial eggshells, then there is an issue there, too, is what I'm saying. But he needs to be, first off, more sensitive to the fact that he's talking to his girlfriend. Uh, was it a girlfriend or wife? I don't remember if you said yeah, wife or I girlfriend. It says, I think Probably it's a girlfriend. girlfriend. Yeah. yeah, but throwing, even though if it, even if it's an innocent, you know, hey, me and uh you know susan or whatever name he's throwing out there used to do this this and this when you may be thinking you're telling just an innocent story or whatever this it has something to do with what you're the, the conversation you're having right you're still bringing up an ex and that's a sensitive topic for people understandably yeah it is. so he has to be more conscious of what the hell he's saying yes and uh, I think I don't I don't know if she's I guess she's already getting mad and having conversations about it so that's the first step like she mentioned communication she's letting him know this is not comfortable for me all the time but it is he doing it that much is it because that's odd yeah that's, that's a little odd to me too is the, he the is way he, it's written he's the way doing it's written it often yeah she right. said mildly often how, how does that I, mean I, I, yeah it, I don't, exactly what is mildly often mm -hmm. like i mean she can't say anything if she's asking a question about a specific person or an event. Yeah, an event, yeah. And he says that name, right. but if he's just randomly bringing up old girlfriends, that's odd too. Agree. And I don't again mildly often. I mean, is it often or is it not? Yeah, I know. <laughs> what, is, <laughs> what is mildly often? <laughs> so. I agree. I I feel like, uh, like you said, her her feelings are definitely valid. So like, like she said, if if it is a big deal to me. 
then I feel like I need to bring it to the table because everybody has their own little yes little things that bother them. Absolutely. So if like we we can't erase our past, right? So you can't like you know that uh, Jim Carrey movie. Um, you know, what is that? The Spotless Mind, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Yeah, right, Where right. you go get this girlfriend erased out of your mind. Yeah. Uh, you can't do that. Yeah, that's, so, that's just science fiction. Like you said, if there's a, if there's an event, you know, something that you did, if, hey, did you, have you ever gone bungee jumping? And he blurts out, yeah, me and Susan went bungee. You know, yes. That, I could see that, that happening. Right, right. But it depends on how he's bringing it to the table. And then, Honestly, the way I feel, if I if I were him, and the person I cared about came to me and said, "Look, you bringing up these other girls bothers me," I would really try not to bring them up. And if I did, I would say I might preface it by saying, "Look, I know that that this bothers you, but I, you know I can't leave the name out of this conversation when I when I tell right, you what right. I'm about to tell you. I can't not say their name." Uh, because some stories, I mean, you have to include. Yeah, uh, and I will say too, and for anybody younger listening to this type of thing that's had some issue like this, this actually becomes more prevalent when you're older and have kids, and and let's say you've had a marriage and you have kids, amen, and you have a new relationship, you will talk about your ex. You have to. Yeah. You're still a parent. Yeah. Um, now that's completely normal for the most part, but if it's this sounds a little bit like it's according to her. It's overboard with, yeah. with this other these other girls. Yeah, you brought up a really good point there. Uh, when when you do have kids, children, you have a you know the person you made those kids with, and you have these experiences with them, still have to sometimes interact with them. Or yes, something. and that's just a and normal to be a, honest, adult. Yeah, you're going to yeah. say, hey, you know, I talked to so and so the other day about how one of my kids are doing in school. You know. I could see that bothering the person, but at least you're being upfront and honest. Right, and and they have to understand that that is yeah. your number one job if you still have younger kids. Right, and you will. Matter of fact, the other person should have some kind of relationship with the yeah yeah at, at some saying. point because yep. you, uh, look, I got to meet my baby's mama yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah over here for this school thing going on. So that's normal there, I guess. But so that's a little bit off topic. But I'm just saying as far as the bringing up exes and, thing and you could also make it almost a joke out of it yes you could go me and she who shall not be named yes absolutely you know and and do it that way so at least you say and look uh i don't care about this person anymore because i, I won't even i won't even say their fucking name i'm just gonna say they were there right you know? but the, what the, i guess what i was going to get to was it sounds like he's bringing up more than one name, so it's not like he's still infatuated with one. Well, no, the good point because if it was just like she, he kept bringing up one particular ex, you would want to go dive deeper and say, does he still have a thing going on there in his head? At least, yeah. I mean, mentally. What least. I what I would worry, like with the point you're making, you're right. He's not focusing on one. I would worry that he's bringing up multiple ones. I don't know. It, it, maybe there's not a lot context here yeah right yeah but, this would be something you need to ask more questions back but i think she feels like she's being compared that's what i was going to say maybe he's you know saying these things to kind of jab at her a little bit to be honest right with you about right. they were so much more fun you know we did this this and this and you know uh he's not coming out and saying they were more fun but he's trying to paint this picture to maybe make this person be more what spontaneous or, or right it like sounds that. like to me that it may be some kind of attempt i mean again we need context but we do it could be an attempt to say to like you said almost take a jab to make her start thinking that you know because there's something that he doesn't like about her right and he's just afraid to come out and say it which is the wrong approach. It is. It's absolutely the wrong approach, but I think that may be what's going on. Just the way it's described. Everybody makes missteps, too. Yes. Everybody screws up. You know something bothers your partner, and sometimes you screw up and say it anyway, yes. and you feel like shit. That's when you just have good communication and say, hey, man, I'm sorry I brought that up. I, I'm sorry I said that. I know we've talked about it in the past. Uh, sorry about that. It's, communication is key, man. It really is key. Right. As long as you validate each other's feelings. That, that's right. Pretty much nothing's off the table. That, that's right. Exactly. That's the first step to everything. You, there, it's not that she has invalid feelings and that she's just, she's just worrying about it. Yeah. So that's the first thing, and then th that's it. I mean, you have to 
you have to have an actual conversation, but not yelling. You have to, the Amen. first step to a conversation is listening yes. to the other person. Don't talk at them, talk to them and listen, number one. And then, you know, maybe you'll find out what's really going on there if there's more to it. Because it could be maybe it's maybe it's just, you know, um, an honest mistake or whatever you want to call it as far as him just bringing up things in the past. But it, it does sound like a little bit, again, we're going off just kind of guesses here. We can't ask questions back. Right. But it sounds like he's like maybe she's not as spontaneous like you mentioned. There's something. Yeah. There's something that that he feels is lacking in her that he's, he's afraid to come out and say. Yeah. And so that's on him and her, and maybe she needs to uh, actually, they both need to dig into that by communicating. Um, I, I know we, we got other ones to get to, but I'll just say this. Uh, there are no-nos. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. You, you know, uh, as a guy, you don't want to hear how good – an ex was at doing anything. No, I'm no, not no, saying no. it has, I'm not saying sexual. I'm saying you don't want to hear, uh, he was a good painter. He was a good, you know, <laughs> good carpenter. Right. I don't want to hear. He's a good brick Mason. I don't, I don't really care. No, no bragging. No, you, know, yeah. you don't do that. Yeah. That, that, even that's... if you feel it and you know it, and it's true, even if the whole community knows because he's a well-known carpenter or something like that. Right. It's just not something that you need to brag on. Yeah. And there's there, cause you, there's that old cliche, you know, well, you know, Bobby was a good handyman. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, Frank over here can't fix a fucking, yeah. you know, <laughs> But Frank's good in other things, but, right? You know? So you can't, don't ever bring up that kind of shit. Right. That's just a that's a, that's a stab in the heart for anybody. So that's absolutely oh, yeah. co- absolutely correct. Um, yeah, or you know, had nice hair. <laughs> uh, <you> know, <laughs> okay, with your hair ch- follicle ch- follically challenged like myself. You don't want to hear about this flowing beautiful uh, mane, uh, right? You know, that your ex had, yeah, this thick, or or, right. or have these hair reveals at a hundred thousand subscribers, <laughs> <laughs> and the other one can't do it. All right. <laughs> okay, we're getting in their own. <laughs> I, I could do it. I no, don't mind. No, I'm just but kidding. yeah, the, the, I'm sorry. You can't call it a hair reveal. That's right. You just can't. That's right. Just take off your hat, Tom. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. You know, I told you we we're gonna have fun with these too. Yeah. Um, I anyway, love this. all right. Hit us with. The okay, one. so I got one here, and this one is called. Uh, there's little titles to these, by the way. So I'm. Gonna, I, if I have the screenshots here, I'll read the title. All right. So I have one here called "Discarded Girlfriend." Here we go. My boyfriend and I have been dating for five months, and I absolutely love his personality. I'm having more fun than I've had in a relationship. He's outgoing, adventurous, and loves to socialize. The only problem is is when we're out. I'm having a hard time with some of the behaviors my boyfriend is displaying. He's cool at home, but when we go out, the dynamic changes. I'm more of a homebody, but I understand he likes to get out, and I like to get out too, but when we are out of the house, he is a different person. Instead of, phone, instead of phoning over me like he usually does, he pays all of his attention to other people and women in particular. He touches the small of their backs when he talks to them and compliments them on their looks. I really like him and want to stay with him, but I don't want to be discarded every time we go out either. When we're alone, he's all compliments, so I'm not sure why he behaves like this. Should I be concerned? Interesting, I, interesting. I, I kind of don't like this guy. To be honest with you, yeah, it it, it sounds like a, a douche move, but this is very. I will say it's very early on. Yeah, five months is very very new. It is. So you know, I don't know. It, yeah. He, it, she may become more of a public thing as they get more comfortable and serious. If this, if the, if they are still dating. True. First <laughs> off, I don't like him touching the other girls small of their back. And, no, no, yeah, that's a phoning over certain things about them or whatever i don't like treating somebody one way in private behind closed doors right and differently in public there are certain times when your own insecurity will make a mountain out of a molehill absolutely you feel like he's being more complimentary to these other people and he's just being himself himself you know um just like he is to you behind closed doors. Right. But when you see it from a third-party perspective. It feels It feels different. different. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So maybe that's it. And like you said, as they get to know each other more and they're out in these kind of situations more, then she'll be like, oh, that's just him. Right. And what I was going to say is, first off, again, we don't have context. What kind of social events are these where there's just a bunch of other women around? True. 
Um, is it a, is it a work related thing? You know, is it just partying? Is it a club? But we don't really have the context. The other thing is, is she said right there in the thing, I'm a homebody, but I understand he likes to go out. If you step up and you put yourself right there, then he'll start seeing that you are outgoing a little bit more and you will be, you'll be on that level with these other people he's, uh, you know, uh, sitting there partying with or whatever it is. Yeah. And then you, you interject yourself into that and then he sees you as the same way and then you'll be the one standing there beside him and his arm will be around you while he's talking to these other people. Um, the reason I was asking about the context is because if it's like a, a work thing, let's say it's a work party or something, it may be networking, and that's just his play player way of doing it. I don't know. I'm not trying to justify it because I don't like, like you said. Yeah. The, the the touching thing is a whole different level of that's that sounds like an old Playboy to me. Right. Mo- you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of just like, hey, how are you doing? Uh, you know, it's it's the touching, and then the complimenting. It's almost like he's trying to pick up the girl with his girlfriend standing behind him. Yes. But it sounds like she's off in a corner somewhere is what I'm saying. You know. I, like you said, knows, watching from a third party point of view. And she's, honestly, it, it could be tough to have a relationship between a homebody and somebody who is super outgoing. Yeah. That could, you know, five months might be the expiration date on something like that. Who knows? It could be. I mean, I don't, like, there's, again, there's no other context in these questions about the rest of their lives and how, uh, but he's, She's saying everything's great at home, and he's. he's but here's the thing too: her. if he is complimenting to her and lovey dovey at home, okay. First of all, appreciate that. Well, yeah, absolutely appreciate that. I mean, if it's legitimate, I mean, if it's coming across as sincere and all that, then I don't think it's a lie. Well, the way is. she's writing it, because she says she really digs him, and he has all these great things to say about her there. Well, here's my thing too: if, like, say it is a work type thing like you were saying a work party um i think he should have her on his arm yes that's what i was thinking. he's walking around and he might see a, a woman who when he wasn't with his woman he would feel like he would be more touchy normally just his personality kind of a joe biden type <laughs> oh god yes <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't know but no I'm there is saying. that is true that there are very touchy feely people there in are. general dudes yeah. and, and and girls and i've experienced but, both in my life where it's, you know, you, you ain't seen him, you don't even speak to him but once every couple months or a year, and it's all hugs and, yeah you know, this and that when you meet. It's like, and some people are just not like that. He just, he may be like that. Again, we don't have a lot of details. Right. But all I say is, if you make her feel special behind closed doors, make her feel special in public, introduce her to all these people you're yes. talking to, even if you know she's shy normally. Right. Say, hey, have you met so and so? Because that may be a component of it. It's still very very new yeah. and and he knows she's shy from them getting to know each other for five months and he's not trying to like thrust her out there in the limelight. So it may be actually a protection thing, right? Yeah. In, in yeah. a way. I, but I it comes off the wrong way. The question is, as now she said in particular women, but she did mention that he's outgoing with everybody. Now the question is when he goes up to Bob Right. Does he tap Bob on the shoulder too? Yes, yeah, she, she should be picking up on that. Yes, and, so and that's, watching for that. That needs to be noticed too. So is she focusing in on the women as much as everybody, or like you said, she's seeing it from a different perspective and and starting to add to it. Yep. And, you know. And honestly, this I think this will be a recurring theme. Communication is key. Yep. Say hey, you know this kind of makes me feel uncomfortable. Like you. Give him a chance to correct. Yeah, absolutely. You know, give yeah. him a chance Don't to say, Don't just assume oh, everything's you're right. horrible. I could see how you would see it that way. I mean nothing by it. You'll see. You'll see. Next right. time we go out, you'll see. And give him a chance. Exactly. And, and again, we don't have the actual answer to these, how old these are or anything. Right. This could have been resolved. Maybe they broke up. Who knows? <laughs> but yeah, that's the first step is you got to say, hey, look, I mean, I, I feel kind of uncomfortable yeah, I know, I'm kind of like over here on the. I'm a wallflower. Yeah. You're out there, you know, all in, you know, comfortable, right? Um, and I see you doing this. I mean, what's what's going on? I'd like to be included or not, or not, whichever it is. Um, yeah. but you can't you can't do both. Don't forget me if I'm on if right if I'm comfortable being a wallflower and you're comfortable being a butterfly. At least come back. To me, yeah, right. Every now, and which again. it sounds like he was, so, or you know, or is. I'm not sure which it is. What tense we're talking in here? <laughs> everybody has boundaries. Yes, you know, if you state them up front, 
then nobody's getting sucker punched later and feeling like, well, you let me do it for months before you said anything. Right. This right, could have been right. resolved way early. Exactly. You know? So yeah, uh, first step, talk to him about it. Don't write dear Abby. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking that earlier. <laughs> you know, yep. I mean, seriously, yep. some of these, I mean, I understand some of these, they've, they're, they're clearly have already tried to communicate, but some have not. I know. And yeah. so, you know, you just got to like say, they're scared to talk to your partner. They're scared to talk to the partner, but they'll write a stranger in a newspaper. <laughs> Or an yeah. art, or online article, whatever it is. I'll say nothing feels better than than having an open line of communication yep. with your partner. But at the same time, these type of things are great because you're getting a third party moderator that has nothing vested nothing in vested. each person. That's right. There's no yeah. So All right. Let I think you go. got I think you're up next, man. All right. How how are we doing so far? I don't know. Is this going good or not? I'm having a blast. <laughs> I think they're fun too. <laughs> I'm I'm really loving it. Okay. I have a coworker. Let's call her Margaret. <laughs> Margaret and I work alongside each other all day, for the most part. We work well together, and there's a good vibe between the two of us. However, recently, I've really enjoyed her presence. I kind of look forward to seeing her and spending time with her. I probably should have mentioned that she is very married. Oh, That's not a problem, because it was never meant to be anything more than a tiny crush. Recently, though, another co-worker... Let's call him James. <laughs> <laughs> James. Just so happens to be. <laughs> Has been spending a ton of time with her. At first, they would include me for lunch and other outings, but recently have excluded me and gone off on their own, which isn't that big of a deal except for one night. One night, I get a handful of phone calls from a number I don't recognize. I finally answer, and it was Margaret's husband. He was worried because it was after 9 p.m. and she wasn't home yet. He wondered if I had any idea where she might be. It wasn't until that moment that I realized that Margaret and James were together doing God knows what. Uh-oh, Margaret. Bad Margaret. <laughs> Although I can't assume Jane, uh, I can't assume what it was. And I know it's not my place because it's definitely not my business, but I can't stop thinking about it. This is the stupid and idiotic part of my logic, but I'm jealous of James. I wish I was in his place. I wish that we were that were me instead of him. I can't help it, especially since her husband is the one who should be the jealous one, not me. Right. I'm sure he doesn't even know. Anyway, it's embarrassing for me to admit the way I feel, but I need some advice. Because the thought of being at work with all this going on is driving me crazy. I can't let it go and would rather not work there anymore than to be around it. Separation might be my only solution. Yeah, man, that's that's interesting. Um, that's I mean, let dynamic. me just say this: What was his? Did he say his name? No, uh, he didn't say didn't his name. Sign off. No. Uh, let's say uh, Johnny. <laughs> Johnny, <laughs> you dodged a landmine. I'm just telling you, <laughs> you, you, you don't want to get tangled up in the married thing. Don't do it. So, don't do while it. I understand the fantasy of wanting to be in uh, James in his shoes, right? Uh, the the guy who she did hook up with, apparently, you are assuming that because he said he couldn't assume, but he is. Yeah, yep. Um, I get that. I think everybody totally gets that. Everybody's seen an uh, you know attractive person at work or whatever it is. Somebody you get along with really good. Yep. yep. And um, you your feelings or thoughts go there, but they're married or you're maybe married or whatever. Yeah, just stay away from it. <laughs> just don't it, let them let them uh, blow. You know, because that's that's going to blow up anyway. Is what I'm saying. And you don't want to be there when don't. James shoes when that happens. No, when so, he comes barging into your workplace. That's right. It almost sounds like a little bit of envy. Like he's thinking, I should have yeah, made a move. Yeah, I should have made I a move. I was trying to be too cool. I knew she was married. So I, I was just going to let it be a crush. Yeah, um, I should have made a move, and that could have been me instead of James. Yeah. I really feel like that's the place they're coming from, and I think that's wrong, yes. the wrong place. I think this person's smart enough to know that. I think they just wanted to get that off their chest when they wrote in to this place. I, I, I really believe they know that, okay, James and Margaret are doing wrong. I am the lucky one here. I'm glad I didn't get tied up in that. Right. I really feel like they feel I don't, Yeah. And I now, with his fantasy like you're talking about, his mind went there, but he didn't do anything about it. He right. didn't physically do anything. He's glad about that, but he is jealous of James at work, and it's affecting his work. That I think that's the bigger thing he needs to worry about is how it's affecting him right. at work. Exactly, because he said at the end, I'd rather 
leave than stay there at work. Yeah, that's odd. So if you're re- if you would rather leave your job, which again I don't know how great a job this is, or if you love it or whatever, you seem to. Um, if you're having to leave work instead of seeing her, essentially, you got deeper feelings than just a small crush. Amen. Number Indeed. one. Yep. He he's lucky here, and I think he said at the end, he, it's none of his business. But he did assume. He did assume. So we don't even know that that James and home girl was hooking up. I mean, yeah. it could have been something legitimate. I doubt it, but yeah. I mean, it could have been. So um, it literally could have been anything. They could have been out at a bar talking about her feelings for this dude. Right. She could have been asking James for advice. Very well you know, could have. Um, but I, my my thing is this, man. He didn't have a problem with her being married. He wasn't jealous of her husband. No. But now there's this James guy that he knows from work. Right, another employee walks That's in. That's and- why people cheat. Because out of sight, out of mind, if they don't know the spouse, if they don't see the spouse, That's right. they basically don't exist in their world, and the the woman or man so there's is no, fair game There's almost. no empathy there for yeah. the other spouse. Right. But now that he knows James, knows James is, is the one, it's like he's jealous. He probably looks at her differently. You know what I mean? Oh, no doubt, and no doubt. So, so, but he, but he's trying to look at her. He's looking at her differently at the same time, wishing it was him. You know, definitely. to be a part of being the home breaker wrecker. I'm sorry, home wrecker. Look, this Ooh, dude. Wait a minute. I said something wrong. Oh. I said he didn't know. Uh, he didn't. I basically implied he didn't know the guy. But the guy had his phone number. That, right, yeah. I was going to say that, too. Yeah. So he's kind of a dog. Yeah. He, he's, if that guy had his number and called him, hey, do you know where so-and-so's at, Margaret's at? I haven't seen his Yeah, why number. would the husband have the phone number if right. he didn't already know the husband? Yes, he's kind of a dog, dude. So, I right. I, like or, I mean, guy. did the wife, are they that kind of relationship or working relationship where the wife gave, hey, let me give you Johnny's phone number at work just in case. Yeah, that don't make, make much wonder. sense. That doesn't. No. So I don't think we're getting the complete story there. I don't no. either. Now, because I was going to mention the phone number too. Like, how in the hell did he get your number, dude? Yeah, that's that's kind of odd. So my my advice, if I was giving this guy honest advice, I would say, be glad you didn't make a move. You would have been making the wrong move. Yep. Leave. The married woman alone, you might could express your feelings verbally if she ever let you know that there was any cracks or anything there or that she liked you. Express your feelings, say, Hey, I dig you too, Margaret, but you need to cut ties. Yes, you know, move out. Then we can go, uh, yeah. then we can pursue something. Everybody wants to take the easy way out and skip the whole uh divorce thing or whatever it is or breaking up with the other person. Yes. That's what I don't I've never understood about people. Right. You know, I just I don't get that personally. I know a lot of people out there don't care, but that's the key. If you do get to the point where you express that and they reciprocate in some way, yeah. And there you see something going forward, you have to get the other person out of the picture. You have to. Yeah, that, you, you, you have can't to. Can't let them say, "Well, there's so much to divide. It's going to be complicated. Yes. There's kids involved. Well, there's more red flags. Exactly. You know? So just enjoy that you didn't step on the landmine. Amen. Bottom line. Agree. All right. Let's see what we got next here. I think this is this is an interesting one. I, I grabbed this one to be because a lot of them sit around relationships, and this is kind of a, a weird one. This one's called one two three four five. Ooh. Uh, d- uh, let's see. Do you know how many times I'm, no, I'm sorry. Let me start that over. Do you know how many lines I have in my ceiling? 25 curious on how many books I have on my bookshelf. 110. I could go on, but I'm sure you don't really care. I never did before either, but I can't help it or better yet. I feel like I shouldn't, shouldn't help it. I've always been obsessed with numbers. As a kid, I would see numbers everywhere. The number of desks in my classroom, the number of white cars we would pass as my parents drove me to school. But I could also let it go. I could go weeks and even months without really counting anything. But lately it's been really getting out of control. I can't enter a room unless I enter on a multiple of 10. I can't enter... Uh, I'm sorry, These are, some of these are not written well. I make sure I lay down to sleep on an even number on the clock in order to get the best sleep. I could go on, but I won't bore you with the madness. I need help. Can I ever stop this crazy counting? <laughs> so this is an OCD. Yes. Uh, compulsive, whatever, obsessive compulsive disorder of counting things. 
Yes. When you're getting to the point of going to sleep on an even number, you know in your head that don't make no sense. I know. You're not asleep by the time it flips to an, to an odd number. That is, that is so. <laughs> you know. I, but I have these weird things, you know, like that too. I've always, my whole life, so I can relate. I used to count, um, I used to count the squares in my ceiling. Yeah, I, I brought, I picked this earlier. Remember if I said, because I said it reminds me of you and your stats and your thing with numbers. You yeah. have a thing. That's why I grabbed this out of, just out of curiosity where we went with it. I, I, for years as a child, teenager, whatever, if I was in the passenger seat of a car, I would, you, we, we could be talking, we could be dead in conversation, and I would be right there with you. But, <laughs> what you didn't know I was doing at the same time was as we were going down the road, every driveway to right. my right that was coming, you know, it was on my side, every driveway or road that would, you know, intersect on my side, I'm clenching my right jaw, my my, my teeth together. Like counting like with your jaw. Counting and doing that. And like <laughs> it's, it was like it was like an internal counter. Right, right. And, I got you. The I tick. Can, the it's tick. weird. It's it and I I only confess that to a few people in my life, but that was a weird thing I did. And another weird thing is like if say there's a spot on a windshield. All right. All right. I would close one eye, take that spot, that speck on the windshield, and trace around like traffic lights i would trace around clouds with it and it's like so you know some people would notice me like moving my head around and go what are you doing and right. i would be embarrassed of, like i don't know I mean, so I <laughs> i'm have, drunk i have weird things <laughs> like that too i don't I, I, and i never never understood why but i i get it i do yeah i don't i don't i don't know i can't really i, I think we've all done a, as kids a little bit of the counting thing uh so i get that you know because we've all counted you know sidewalks lines yes. or you know all that kind of stuff and one. counting things going down the road or you're sitting there bored in your room and you're counting ceiling tiles or whatever it is i think we've all done a few things like that i think this is getting a little extreme the way he it describes it but he also recognizes it yeah, that that. So if you can recognize it and you know you have some issue, like if you're getting on an elevator, I don't know. Do you, he's walking to an even floor is what he's saying. I'm not sure exactly. Yeah, I don't know. You know that that's just silly. You have to right. you, to, to get to stop all this obsessing with this particular thing. And in, in my opinion, and again, I'm no doctor, but I, this is don't go get on drugs. Right. Don't go no. to it. You know, just you're you going to have to fight through it is what you're you going to have to do. That's right. You're going to have to lay down at 827. Yep. You're going to have to get a handful of books, stick them on your bookshelf, but not count how many you stuck exactly. on there. Exactly. And, yeah. and just go, yeah, you're going to have to go through a, a, a couple of days of, oh, you know, can't, I can't not do I can't deal with it. I need yep. to know. Yeah. Go through that. Lay down at 827, knowing it don't make no difference if it's 826 and 827. You're not asleep yet. Right. And get on a fucking elevator. It's almost like. When my cousin learned to swim, yeah, he was uh, a little wuss, so to speak, and his mom babied him, and I threw him in the pool. Now he learned to swim, right? He wasn't going to drown. I was. I would have pulled him out. Yeah, it's almost like that tough love thing. Look, you know, you got a little issue. He seems to be recognizing the issue. <laughs> Just fight through the dumb counting thing. Yeah, Those I mean, count all were, you want. I've always hated to throw people in the pool thing but it does work every time it, it does absolutely it, the survival instinct kicks in and guess what you can swim that's right um i don't know that's I, yeah i mean i look we're we're having fun with it but i mean i, I don't have expertise on ocd stuff um i, I mean yeah, everybody, everybody's like it to a out. degree I don't either but i think everybody is everybody man. has to a degree i mean like you know you have a Maybe it's your uh, bookshelf where you have everything in just the right spot, you know. Yep. And you and you, you know, so everybody's got that to some degree. Lace your shoestrings the same exact way on every. The lace shoes. your shoestrings. That's one thing I do. Actually, I lace it a certain way. Now I'm and not going. One to... strings longer than the other. It drives you nuts. So yeah, you get everything right. perfect every yep. time. You learn how to do it perfectly. But I guess the difference is for people that have really real OCD issues is that you like inst- like if I remember, oh shit, you know, I didn't fix my shoestring. I- I'll do it tomorrow. But uh, they have to like fix it right then i guess that that's right. severe cases of ocd yeah and and people you know they have those washing their hand compulsions and yeah. things like that yeah. and, and i've they, seen i've seen houses 
that are complete shitholes. And I mean, and I mean, I'm not, I'm saying shithole in the sense of there's shit piled everywhere, but the shit's neat. Yes. Like the stacks of shit are neat and, and they know exactly where everything still is in that stack of shit. Man. Like, like completely, I'm like, you can't even walk through the room, like through pathways, but they every stack is perfect and neat. And if they, if you move something a quarter of an inch on a table, they know it's been moved. Yes. I know people like that. Me and too. it's crazy to me. And the counting thing, it just hit me. I have a friend who counts. They they have this compulsion where when they take the, the lid off of a soft drink and they tighten it back, they go like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven turns. And like after it's already bottomed out, right? Yeah. After it's bottomed out, they back it off and bottom it out again seven times before they do this. Okay. With a handbrake in a car. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then do it. Right, right. Um, you know how like you could take the side of your finger and scratch your nose by rubbing it yep. on there seven times. Like, okay, yeah, really that's... <laughs> weird that they do that. But people have these odd things about them, and if you hang around them long enough, you'll start picking them, up, picking up on them. Yeah, I, I don't well, you know, know how that gets that. It deep. sounds, really... it sounds, yeah, it sounds weird, like the seven times thing, especially. But if you think about it, it's not much different than a routine. No, nope. I have a routine when I go to bed. I mean, it's not like exact, but it's pretty much. Yeah, you know, so I'll I'll do whatever. I'll I'm, I'm I'll do my little. You know, I'm sitting there watching something. Riddick gets his PB and his Kong. I eat a snack. You know, I, I look at a couple of things on my phone and double check everything. I go in there, make my get my bed ready, t- turn my fan on, you know, and then sit out on the porch for a couple of minutes, whatever, and then go to bed or whatever. It's almost the same thing, but it, it's not. I'm not over. I'm not thinking about. It, I guess I'm not. I guess it's just not compulsive. I do know a compulsion you have. Uh oh, do I? Notifications on your phone. Yes, I do. I you do. hate. I'm looking at my phone like it's I, like I, it, I can't. I can't understand how you can look at it. Yeah, because you have like 157 thousand missed calls and texts, uh, and 479 unread text messages, and I have to clear. Like I won't even look at some of them on other apps I don't even rarely <laughs> right. use. It's just some old app I don't even use anymore. But a notification will pop up, and I have to get the one off. Yes, you do. I can't. Yes, so there Mine's you go. Three digits. I yeah, don't know. You have. It to. makes me. It made me feel bad the first time you pointed it out. I was like, oh, I didn't know that was a thing. I, yeah, I thought no, everybody's might. Look no, like that's that. huge. I actually know quite a few people like that. Yeah, yeah. Melanie's the same exact way. She cannot stand to have a notification on her on her phone. Yeah, right it's a, it's it definitely is a thing. So that is true. I mean, and that of course would have never came about if we didn't have modern day smartphones. Yeah, that's right. But uh, so I wondered how I don't <laughs> we didn't have that with flip phones and shit (laughs) um i don't know wait a minute i'm trying to think back when we had answer machines oh yeah could i stand numbers being on the answer machine with unread messages i don't remember i don't think so that's actually a good question could you walk past it see a number there and not hit yeah i I think i could though i I know i I had them i had a million of those i mean i had them in this house you do everything you got to do and then when you're ready (laughs) you'll sit down and listen to them yeah i think that's the difference like i mean yeah i will clear my phone because i always have it i'm always Always on it too much yep but i'm not like i'm not gonna because like i can lay it down beside my bed right and I hear emails start to come in. I don't. You don't pick. It I don't up. pick it up. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. So I know the next morning, my routine. I'm going to clear off and go through everything and check social media and check my emails and messages. Yeah, that's building YouTube. up for your routine for the morning. Exactly. I know that once I close my eyes and I've set that phone on the charger, that's the next day. Dude. Okay. So yeah, that would be unhealthy then if you couldn't sleep because it kept exactly. going off and you had to clear them. Right. That's yeah. that's when you know it's not compulsive. I'm glad it's we just, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad we talked about that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, but just but yeah, just knowing though, knowing your phone. <laughs> but like I'm not losing sleep over your phone. Just I'm just gonna tell what everybody what the numbers are. I'm on telling you it's right insane. Now. Let me just see. James Wright's really particular about answering the phone. Right now I have 42 texts. I have <laughs> Oh my god. You're leaving people on read. Oh my little phone thing? 367. Oh my god. <laughs> Help. <laughs> Email 232. Oh my god. Oh uh, my god. Uh, on my settings, I guess I have 5 updates I have. Oh done or Jesus Christ. Like that. No wonder your phone don't work. <laughs> Dude, Facebook 5, Messenger 11. I don't know. 
20 on Twitter. Uh, yeah, I bet. I, I bet you got him on Twitter and Instagram for damn sure. <laughs> uh, wow. That... He, James Wright refuses to move from Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> That's another pet peeve of mine with James. He will not check. <laughs> He's supposed to create a new Instagram since we created new podcast Instagram and shit. To. That's right. I've been tagging your old one with one picture on it, and I'm he won't glad. check it. I, I, yeah, remember I tried to log in, and I don't <laughs> right, know. I've right. got to do that. I've got Because i got to change those tags when you do. Okay. Lillian cannot leave the house. <laughs> James <laughs> must make Instagram. Okay, here we go. I got it. <laughs> To-do list. Here we go. All Let's right, your see. turn? Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> yeah, these are fun. These yeah, are I fun. love these. Hopefully dude. you guys are getting a kick out of this shit. We're trying to be partially serious. <laughs> but we're uncovering our own little ticks. Ooh, this was juicy, dude. Uh -oh. I can't wait to hear what you say uh -oh. about this. We got a juicy one. All right. Dear Hoopers, I have been married for two months now and thought I had an honest and amazing relationship with my husband. We are perfect for each other, or so I thought. I had been married before to a cruel and unfaithful man. My husband was engaged to a woman who cheated, so being faithful and honest was a prerequisite for us both right from the very start. Should be for everybody, yep. Agreed. <laughs> A few weeks ago, I was about to clear my browser history, and I found a sign-up page from an online sex site. Uh oh I had heard of this site, and it's basically a hookup for sex and the like. I knew it wasn't me, so I opened the login, and it opened an account. It was my husband. I can't explain the feelings of <laughs> utter betrayal <laughs> and heartbreak I felt. He works away, and I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. I can't talk to anyone I know about this but have no idea what I should do. He also set up another email address. I have access to his other email address as I manage most of our accounts and bills as it's hard for, as it's hard for him when away at work, so another email is just another secret. Do you have any advice for me as to how I should handle this? I wasn't snooping. The history was on my phone as he uses my Apple ID on his phone and it came through on mine. I'm in a constant state of nerves, anger, and confusion. I trusted him with everything. Sex site betrayal. Oh, damn. The the classic, I thought I was with the perfect dude, and he's yes. out here on a sex site. Um, let me say real did she say they had kids? Did not. They've only No, they've only been married two months. Okay, so they didn't. if they do, they're probably not. Yeah, probably old, from previous marriages, right. I'm assuming. I was just going to say, really, you, you got to make sure there's not a kid involved using parents' shit because that happens. Ooh, yes. You know, on the it's the kid on the site, and then it looks like dad, and dad's like, "What the hell are you talking about?" Yeah. <laughs> and then he looks like he's lying, and there's a big fight. That's a tough one, and I and uh, we we I think a lot of us have probably been through this. I know I have. Uh, it, it it punches you in yes, the it does. gut. Yes, it it, does. it's it's like a knife going through your heart. And let me just say this for any of these cheating kind of things. It doesn't mean that you're inadequate. Let me just say that for people. Because a lot of these are going to rob you around if cheating. You've been cheated on. Yes, if you've been cheated on, it's not It's not that you're inadequate or you're not you know, giving him or her or whatever it is what they need. Agreed. It's a mental thing with them. Some people need validation for whatever reason yeah. outside of the marriage or relationship or whatever. Yes. So... Number one, it's bullshit and it's wrong, but this just goes back to the same thing. You you have to you have to put it out there. You have to fucking bust him. You really do. It's just the way, there's no other way around it. You can't you know, like I said, verify it's him. If there's no other kids or whatever, you're, I mean, I'm assuming it is. Right. But you have to just come out and say you want to tell me about whatever dot com or whatever in the hell it is. I don't know. Is there a is there a Tinder app on a computer? Yeah. I don't know. I know that's so infamous for swiping <laughs> yeah. so i don't know what what site and it doesn't matter but the point is you got to go to him you have to you yep. have to confront this person and i believe this is not something new for him no uh, no I, I honestly, not if he's got a separate email and everything yeah I, now he is dumb for using the apple id yeah hers that is yeah so it's not a smart one <laughs> and i just i believe he wasn't as good a guy as you thought he was in the beginning. Yeah, there's, that's there's right. There's no way your honeymoon phase should be over after two months of marriage. No, 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 no way. I mean, unless you guys he, you, dated for twenty she years mentioned, and got married. Right? She used she used the, she mentioned that 
she he had been cheated on, so they had really talked about all this faithfulness yeah. stuff. She had been in a cruel, abusive relationship. And, and he, he had, had been, been cheated, cheated on by on. a fiance or something. Yes. Right. So I think maybe his story you might want to talk to his ex. Yeah. I mean, if you want to keep the guy around, I don't know that you do. I know it's embarrassing to get uh, separated after two months of marriage. Yes. But, I mean, it's so disrespectful for him to go outside of your marriage after two months or at any time and then come back and share your bed, uh, bringing who knows what into your marriage. Right. Uh, the other thing, too, just to throw it out there, because um, we don't know the details, is – it could have been, I'm not like he may have not have acted on it. What I'm saying is maybe he had this idea like I'm gonna check out this whatever, but he that's as far as it went. I don't know. It doesn't mean it's right. Right. I'm not saying that. Don't take no, that the wrong way. I, I'm just saying that. Is there a difference between I'm thinking about this impulse? I'm I'm starting to look into it, but I'm not acting yet. You know what I mean? Okay. Here's a scenario. Of what basically what you're saying, he hadn't acted on it. I could see there's guys who do want to be involved in like water cooler talk at work. Yeah. So if a lot of your buddies at work are saying, "Dude, have you seen this website? Do you know that chick we went to high school with? She's yes. on there, dude. She's yes. on there. You should go check. This it has out. happened to me you know? actually. And then you just go innocently, you know, you got to sign up so you can browse. The yes, thing yes. to see who they're talking about. So then you can go to work and say, hey, I saw her, dude. Yeah, You're now, right. She's all over the place on there. Right. And then, yeah, that could be innocent. That, right. And that, that actually happens. I'm And I'm not trying to defend this dude. We don't know. We're just throwing this out there because this has happened to me. We had a buddy. I won't mention names. But he went to a, a stripper's house right. and installed cable. Okay. All right. And he said, go check this out. And I went and looked. And and left it on my phone. It was just, hey, he was like, buddy, hey, check this girl. I just went to her house and did her cable and blah, blah, blah. Oh, I see what you're saying. And I looked on my phone and left it there, and my ex saw it. Saw and it. And, of course, jumped on me, and I was like, no, I just, you know, homeboy, I won't say names, just showed me he went to this girl's house. I just looked at it, you know, looked it up. He told me to check her out. Right. And it was really that was it. And you, yeah, and, you but it looked promising it, and all that stuff. And, yeah. and it looked bad on me. It and does. yeah, I mean, did I really care? Well, no, but I mean, you're, in, you're just your buddies and you're looking at this girl who, you know, apparently is a famous stripper in the area or something or whatever it was. See, and I didn't know that story. And I just pulled that out of thin air because I know things like that happen it, at work. It, it absolutely it, it does. Like it that. does happen. And I know uh, I've known other people here locally who did end up on porn sites, and people talked about it. That's right. So yes, you you have to consider is that's why you have to go talk to them. You have to. Yeah. You have to figure out is this legit? Is it a impulse thing? Did he not go this far yet? You can kind of save it or keep him from going that route. Is it worth saving all that kind of yeah. stuff? But that's why the communication, you got to talk. This is the way I would do it. I wouldn't, you know, be like balling or, or have all of his stuff in a pile ready to light a match to it when right, he walks right, in the door. Right. right? Right. I would say, I would look this person dead in the eyes and I would say, look, I want to give you the benefit of the doubt. Right. But I want you to know I'm not an idiot. <laughs> so, so as you explain yourself, don't give me anything far fetched. Right. Here, you know, so, yeah, I just, I, I want you to know that I I want to believe in you. I want to believe in you, but don't test my intelligence. Right. I think that's the fair way to approach it. You got to. You absolutely have to. Um, because those things, and, and, you know, again, make sure I'm, I'm clear on that. We're not trying to say this. We don't know anything about no, this shit. No, no. We're um, trying to give honest advice. I feel pretty good about what we're. Yeah, no, I'm just, you, you know, you just got to be careful because somebody will listen and say, well, what if he was just and somebody say, "See, you're you're victim blaming or something." No, 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 oh, no, 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 yeah, no. I don't want to do that. No, no, it's just saying. I'm just saying. I've actually experienced that was a completely legitimate reason for me to have a picture of this stripper. Not, I'm not saying nude. This was like the site where you would go. Yeah. Go uh, hire him, I guess. Uh, whatever. Right. On my phone, and it was just a dude that went to her house to do cable. Yeah. And he was like, "Check this girl out. I just went by there and did cable." 
you know, and you she was in her bathrobe or whatever. And then here, 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 and she gave me her, this website and here it is. Right. And you and, cared so much that you just threw your phone down. Exactly. And, you know, that's what it is. And the same old place it always lays where exactly. everybody knows my password it's, and everything. It's innocent. It's exactly. Innocent. So those things do happen is all we're saying. Yep. But yeah, in that case, uh, probably not innocent. I'm sure. I feel um, like, but not, I think she yeah. would probably go back and I don't know how old these are, but probably see some other signs of things already too. That's, that's good early. Point. That's early. That Two is, months is early. That's very early. And you're right. Once she starts thinking about it, she probably could look back and go, ah, oh, yeah. He right. is out of town because he works out of town. That's right. You know? And if he's if he's online on that site, then he's probably using it out of town. Oh, yes. That's scary. So I, I can imagine. I know. I've, 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 everybody's felt the pain. I think most people felt that pain, that gut-wrenching, oh, my God, are you serious right now? And what sucks is, so this, this lady has – dealt with a cruel and, and uh you know mean person before right he probably didn't cheat he's probably just an ass right and then she gets with this guy thinks he's everything in a box of donuts marries him two months into it finds out he's probably sleeping around and she's gonna have trust issues moving forward that's right and that sucks to be the third guy and that's the thing know? with all these relationship things that it doesn't matter who's doing the cheating wife or husband or boyfriend or girlfriend you this is what starts scarring your heart as you get experienced and get older and you always think about these things yes you always have starts to some degree trust issues yep and then the third guy you fall in love with is going to have to answer a lot of stiff questions right and he, he may be the most innocent motherfucker in yep. the world and never even think about it and whatever yeah. and he gets a bad rap because of all these other dicks out that's, here cheating running that's right around, so. that's right Anyway, awesome. Uh, awesome. I think a lot, a lot of these are coming down to communication, but still, you know, it's, it's interesting, little, the dynamics that are different. Is it my turn? Yep. Uh, all right, what we have next here? I did the, uh, the weird numbers one. So we have, um, here we go, uh, We Lost Our Zing Ooh. Uh, is the title here. So, Dear Hoopers, uh, I've been married for seven years but do not love my husband the same way I used to. I mean, I like him more than anyone else in the world, but there is no zing. I love him too, but I don't feel in love with him. It's hard for me to have physical relationships with him. I don't want to leave him. I want to fall in love with him and be physically attracted to him. Can you please help? Thank you. Dang. So, the classic, I've fallen out of love with my husband, but I do want to fall back in love with him yes. and save it. What do they call it? There's a, there's a term for the honeymoon phase running out. Is it the seven-year itch? Yeah, yeah, they 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 do. Have, well, you do have a seven year itch. Yep. That is that. So kind of I the honeymoon phase is over, and you, you know you've you've really got the no no in like the real real person, yeah. you know, unabridged. You know what I mean? Yeah. And see every flaw and it, it, that honeymoon. So I don't know. It may be. I don't know. What did it say? Seven years. That's about the right time. Did that say and, seven? Yeah, it did say seven years. And uh, yeah, you start feeling antsy. Yes. Uh, forever starts feeling like a really long time. Right. Yeah. 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 It sounds like that's about the time this may have happened, according to this. Yeah, seven years. Yep. And um, I don't know. I. It's sad. That's not a good place to be in. when, Because when you're in that place, you start noticing things. Yes. And resenting certain you, things. You do. And you start actually like, seeing them physically different. Yeah. If you start like, noticing things that really start to irk you. You, you. you start not liking the way they breathe. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, I don't like the way you chew. Yeah. I don't like the way you walk. <laughs> right. I don't like the way you breathe. And you're thinking all this in your head. You're not saying it to Yeah, them. and yeah. but it breeds more. It does. It breeds more. So this is the point where you have to... You have to you have to come clean, yep. and you have to go to counseling. If you truly want to say it, you have to go to counseling. Yeah. This is something and, that you need a third party, again, somebody who's not invested personally, like family members and shit, because you can't, you can't, you can go to family for advice and all that stuff, and that's fine, but you know that the, you know, that they have their sides in a, in a way, some way. Yep. They care about, like, you know, his parents and family love him. They're, he's number one, not, and, you know, and vice versa. Yeah. And even your own family and friends, if you went to them, they could be like, Come on, you know he's an awesome guy, you know. But just like when you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see about yourself, right? Like everybody's telling you you're so pretty or handsome or whatever. It's the same way. You're looking at this dude. Everybody's telling you. Every sign says he's a great guy. He's a good-looking guy. I remember what it was like to be 
infatuated with him and have great sex with him. But all of a sudden, I'm just not feeling it. Right. So, like you said, find somebody who's not involved. Exactly. To talk, talk, help talk you through this. And I, you need to know that it's natural. Yeah. You know, these things happen. Yeah, this would actually be a good question to write into a, a, a Dear Abby. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, you're thinking about it. I mean, yeah, you, you eventually you have to talk to him about it in this case and, and air it out. But what you want to do is, I guess, is get in the mindset, whether it's through counseling or whatever, with this third party, of starting to look for those things and remembering what you fell in love with him in the first place. Cause and start refocusing on those as opposed to looking for new little things that bug the shit out of you. That's right. Remember those things from the beginning. Right. Because here's what happens, especially for guys, um, and I'm sure it happens for girls too, but I can only speak honestly for guys. When we're, say, play in the field, yep. and we're trying, you know, we're peacocking, right? And, and we're trying to attract a, a partner. That's usually when we're at our physical peak our wittiest, right. our most charming. We smell better than we ever smelled before. <laughs> right. We're well manicured. But when you get into a relationship where all of a sudden you guys are sharing all these hardships and bills and the daily grind. Gets and the bathroom. You, the dude. <laughs> and, and when he's not out running around being athletic and stuff, you to get a dad bod. You know, you get comfortable. You start eating regular meals uh, with right, your Right, as opposed to, like, those date meals where yes. everybody's a fucking salad. Right, and and you're binge eating, and while you're binge watching shows on TV, you develop this dad bod. You're not as active. And, you know, I don't know. I think you wake up one day and you look at your partner, and they do look different than they did in the very beginning and, the, and what, what attracted you to them. So that is worth a conversation and say, hey, we're both – not what we used to be. Yes. Uh, I'm and, sure you're not as attracted to me as I used to be. So let's let's do something. I don't know. Right. And and then you find, you know, the, to, to the rekindling thing in her example is, is not only that physically, but, yeah, finding those emotional connections again and then try some new things together. That would be. Because that you've seen the same old thing and what, like, whatever his hobbies or whatever y'all do yep. together now, if you do something new – you get out together and do something new, you're going to see a new reaction. A different side of this A guy. different side of the person that you think you know. Yeah. And he's going to see a different side of you. Yeah. And he may be going through the same thing. Yeah. Thinking the same things Absolutely. right now, writing into Dear Abby. All of a sudden, you're wearing granny panties all the time. Exactly. Yeah. So you have to do a self, some self-reflection there, too. Not shaving your legs as often but, as you often Right. And that's why you bring it up, because he could be literally going, I'm so glad that you brought this to me because and, I've been thinking the same thing and it's, it's natural thing of growth. And like you like we said, the seven year itch and the honeymoon phase being over, that's all just, that's, that's real. Yep. It's going to happen. There's a reason these things take work. That's right. It's not natural. That's right. It's really not natural. Uh, unfortunately, it's it's not. And as so, natural as it might seem because of at first, societal things. Yes, it's yeah. society, exactly. It's yeah. not natural, a monogamous thing forever. It's just not. It, but if you in in some cases, like um, like I lo always look at my grandparents, they were just as in love at seventy as they were at twenty, and I love that story. But it don't happen often, right? I know a few people have and, that story, but it's really it take it wasn't just all sunshine and rainbows for seventy years. Amen. You it was a lot of shit them, I never saw. They might have had those conversations we're saying exactly. They did they That's did. right. Absolutely did. And it takes work. It does, and it's, I don't know. Uh, I think love is uh, worth fighting for. If you find somebody that you could be with for seven years and the worst thing you have to complain about is I'm not as attracted to them as I was seven years ago, yeah. you're doing, you hit the lottery. Yeah. They don't cheat. They work every day. They care about you. They've been there through surgeries, through bad, through you getting fired, and, that you know, You've hit the lottery. If the worst thing is he's not as attractive, that that there's hope there. Dear Hoopers, my boyfriend and I have been dating for two years. He regularly has bouts of depression that he has suffered from since childhood. Although initially he used to hump my brains out, <laughs> for the last year or more he has little to no interest in penetrating me. Not safe for work, this one, by the way. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> he's in his 40s and has had more than his fair share of debauchery. I'm in my early 30s, the peak of my sexuality, and I need, want, a regular bang. 
We've talked about it, and he knows how I feel that my needs aren't being met. He blames his disinterest in sex on the depression. Sex is an affectionate, loving, and bonding experience. I crave being close to him in that way. Is there any hope for our sex life, or am I doomed to live a sexless existence, destined to shrivel up like a prude? (laughs) P.S. He masturbates regularly, more than once per week, but I'm lucky if we have sex even once per week. It's definitely no more than four times per month. Signed, loss of libido. Yeah, yeah, that um, that sounds like a pretty normal marriage to me. Actually, I'd say so uh, especially at the ages and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, he's not lying. He's not lying. He's not. Um, so many things go into that. Uh, being he's in his forties, I can yes. totally relate. Um, I'm in my forties, and you know, I you do lose interest. Uh, it's like you. You know, we've talked about before, like low T comes into it. Yeah, there's a lot of factors. I mean, the depression is definitely a thing for sure. You just kind of, when you get a little older, it comes and goes, uh, you know, so you can have weeks where you're, you feel like you're 25 again, and you can have weeks or even months where you just don't care that much. So there's a lot of, you know, low testosterone is dropping uh, naturally over time. Um, He's opened up about it. You know, being the yeah, pre- it's has. not it's not something you're proud of, but it's you shouldn't be ashamed of it either. Right. So he's not bullshitting you. Um. Th- th- yeah. And, I mean, and, you and you're know, still talking about four times a month or once a week. That's that's pretty standard for yeah older mar- I, an older couple. Yeah, an older couple. Even though they've only been dating for two years, still, yeah, still. You know, you. I don't. I really don't know what kind of advice she's looking for hopefully she's not looking for somebody to say well you need to talk to him about stepping outside the marriage and uh, right yeah know, yeah, yeah. Uh, let, letting you go explore your sexuality or you know be with other people i hope she's not looking for that kind of advice because my advice is you know be um sensitive Yes, to, absolutely. To his, uh, that, that's you know, a, that's a bi- very biological thing. It's yeah. completely natural, and on top of it, the depression makes all that worse. Right. So you work on the root cause, probably the depression. You will have uh, a, your 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 guy will come back to you in that sense, in a way, and even though it will never be like he's twenty again. Yeah. Period. You talk about it, and you help him work on the depression and support him in that, and and. Stop thinking about it in so much of my needs, my needs. This right. Is, this is marriage. These are relationships we're talking about. It's give and take, and you have to, you have to empathize with the other party and within these issues. He's saying he's battled with depression since childhood, but honestly, if he's in his forties now, he probably has dealt with a lot of that stuff already. Yes, his childhood stuff. Yep. But you telling him your needs aren't being met. Right. That that could be the root of his new depression now. And if, could he's, be. if he's trying to, you know, feel uh, your needs, but in the back of his mind, he's thinking he's inadequate, then that snowballs. Like, yes. I've been in that position where you feel I'm not the man I used to be. I know I should be. I'm embarrassed. Oh, my God. Is this going to happen again this time? And when you have all these thoughts running through the back of your mind, at simultaneously you're trying to please someone sexually, it's a lost cause, dude. Once yes. your brain starts going, you you may as well give it up. Right. It's it's almost like when you know when you're young, it's like the whole the the old cliche. Think about baseball. Oh yeah. It's the it's the it's a similar thing when you start having those issues or whatever, and or your libido is going in general. Yep. And. Most people will sit back and say, you know, guys are always interested. No, we're not. Right. It, you know, it, it's, it's, it's 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 a two-way street. So, yeah, I mean, that's just something where it's just um, a matter, again, of communication and trying to empathize with your partner. And build him up. And build him up as yeah. opposed to my needs, my needs, my needs. Tell him it's okay. Yes. Yeah. Say, I'm going to be okay here. Because believe me. I don't me, want you to worry that I'm going to leave you or anything. Um, you know, you're you're awesome. You know, when we have sex, I'm just saying maybe we should have sex more, but you're all, you know, build him up and that, that'll take away some of the depression in his mind, anxiety. Yes. And, and believe me, he doesn't want to be in that position. No. He, he already feels horrible about it. Yep. He feels guilty. He don't understand probably to a full degree why he doesn't 
He's not interested anymore. Yes. I know somebody, you know, she brought up the, the masturbation thing. That's normal. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're married, how long you're married. That just still happens. It's just the way it is. Right. And that's also him almost checking himself in a way. It is. It, 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 she it, shouldn't be keeping score. No, she should not be keeping score on that. That right. has nothing to do with you. That is his thing where he's trying to keep up with his own body. Yep. Do not go. Were you in there masturbating? I know you've done that four times this week. Uh, but you, you know, hadn't slept with me. Yeah. You know, that's not yeah. the same yeah, thing. Don't keep score. He's in there making sure everything works. He's wondering why it's not working when he's with you, why he doesn't have the drive. And um, let him, you know, work on himself. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, if it gets out of hand, I mean, you know, I get it. Like, if you're not, if he's not there for you, if he's not present for you and trying Right, but right. yet he's in the bathroom or whatever he does, or however he does it all the time, you know. And you, you do that is a problem. Sure, sure. But yeah, yeah. Like Chris said, you know, it is natural. It doesn't matter how old you get, you still, you know, you, like you said, he could be checking himself. He could, he could be doing anything. Yeah, he doesn't want to be in that position. No. Tr- trust me. He, he already feels uh, he's he's older and he's going downhill and all that shit. I'm telling you, uh, there's a big misunderstanding about you know this midlife crisis stuff it's all related to this yeah uh, and not just the relationship and sexual stuff but there's a mentality shift and there's a the natural depression that comes about when you start thinking about getting old yes not being able to do the things whether it's sports or sex and all that kind of things like you used to do especially when your kids get older and they're yeah. going you're empty nesters there's a depression that comes with that and yeah sometimes naturally. you've got other stuff on your mind and then yes. you, know, you have a partner's needs right there that need to be met, but yet you're worried about, man, when I get paid, my check's going to be gone in two days, you know, because mm-hmm. I got to pay bills. You got all this stuff on you, weighing on you, and then you're hating yourself. Like Chris said, he's depressed about the change in his life. He he wants to feel like he did when he was twenty. Absolutely, you know, because uh, when you sit to talk about base, think about baseball thing, I was thinking when you're young. It does not matter how many times you've done the act. Right. There's no limit. As long as there's the desire there. And That's the, right. It, you can perform. You could be on top of a skyscraper. You could be on a Ferris wheel. <laughs> it's going to work. It's going to work. I don't care. But when you get older, it's like anything could uh, could mess up, mess it up, you know, at times. It's, it's really weird. Um yeah, when you're yeah, younger, I, you could drink and still perform. When you're older, alcohol can hurt you. Uh, it's, it's really, it, it's really yeah, there's, weird how there, you got to... There's a lot of mental things going to all that. I don't know if she specifically mentioned any, you know, ED type stuff, but that's just part of the same, it's part of the same mental thing that goes along with it. So it's not always a physical thing. Uh, the depression is probably very heavily involved in this oh, yeah, situation. It could be, it's just a drive thing. Yes. Because you're saying, hey, he's, he's masturbating four times a month, but he could look at you and go, hey, when I was a kid, it was four times a day. Right. The drive's not there anymore. Right, Yeah. exactly. So, yeah, that means, yeah, that's that's not the end of the world by any means. I mean, you, you, she, if she, it is in your world, then you have other issues. Yeah, that, there's other issues, yeah. right. Because, I mean, you're saying – four times a month, once a week, whatever. That's pretty standard for normal uh, sex drives. Right. I mean, again, there's always the occasional, you know, week of, you know, go on vacation. There's, you know, you you feel young again for a week. There's there's, there's obviously there's peaks and exceptions. Valleys. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. There's peaks and valleys. You may go for a month and, you know, it's three or four times a week. And then you go for two months and it's once a month, you know, yeah, or, or whatever. I don't want to harp on this, but if the roles were reversed – you know, yeah. and the dude has a high sex drive and the girl doesn't feel like doing it all the time. Right. You know, uh, society looks at that differently. Oh, absolutely. The, you know, there's like no means no kind of thing. Yeah, you right. Know, it yeah. doesn't matter whether I'm depressed, whether it is, I just said no. Right. Exactly. And you ain't writing in the Dear Abby. Right. Exactly. So think about it that way. Uh, flip it around and go, oh, okay. Right. He might just not be in the mood. There's and think, and think back mind. to those term, those times when you had, you know, you had something going on. You were, you know, maybe you were depressed about something or you actually had a headache. Right. I mean, I though, actually you had know, one. actually reverse that and think about it that way and kind of empathize. And that goes both ways. 
Uh, yes, but I mean that sounds pretty. That's I think that's a pretty common thing right there. I think there. you're right. I think that's pretty common because again, the the depression and all that goes it heavily influences all that and moods and and libido and all that. Absolutely. Uh, all right, let's see. I think we'll, we'll do one more. We have a, a bunch more here, but we just can't do them all in one thing. These no, are fun though. So I'm we'll, loving it. We'll close out with. Uh, did you want to do that one that we? And mentioned the, uh, what was it? The very first one you ever The read. very first one I saw. I think it's cool, yeah. All right. Uh, so here it is. I think the title is um, Virgin Boyfriend Wants to Sleep Around. Ooh. -oh. Dear Hoopers, my boyfriend of three and a half years just told me that I took his virginity when he was 23 years old. So now he's thinking about sleeping with other women since he missed out. Isn't this worse than being cheated on? Because now I sincerely have to consider letting him sleep with someone else, or it could happen without me knowing. Please give any advice you can think of. It's greatly appreciated. Okay, that's that's that's, that's heavy, man. It is it is heavy. Uh, I can understand kind of the confusion there, but there there is no excuse. No, if, there's just no excuse. If he's in a relationship, yes, and he wants to go sleep with other girls then he needs to leave the relationship, period. A hundred percent. There's no letting him do and shit. You don't start that game. So let's say the, the girl um, had sex with five guys, like, before they got together. Right. Okay? It's not, it's not for his place to come up to her and say, well, you had five other partners, and right. I only had That's one. I don't know what it's like to have... Sorry, man. That's the way the cards fail. What are you wanting to go find out? Exactly. You know? I mean, there's nothing you can't find out right there at home. That's right. Yeah. Uh, with somebody that you already know and trust and have been through those awkward phases with and all that kind of shit. And she seems really cool because it sounds like she's wrestling with the decision. It sounds like it, and she shouldn't be. That no. is not an option. Don't, you don't start down that path. Don't because turn him loose. You're, you're validating his, his lame excuses. Yeah. And no, if he wants to go, okay, he can. But you're not going to, don't be with him. Right. Period. He, he's, it's cool that he uh, healed his virginity and, and until he got with her. I think that's, I always admired that. I had a buddy who, while all of us were, you know, promiscuous and doing all this crazy stuff, he stood fast on the fact that he wanted to save himself for the person he loved. Right. Uh, when he found them, you know, and, and yeah, and, hey, more power and, to him. He was a stronger I, motherfucker to me, <laughs> right? And, <laughs> so. and you know, he caught a lot of that. He heard a lot of those yeah, jokes. Yeah, I'm sure. And I'm sure. And, and you know, then now looking back, I'm like, man, I I wish I could have done that. I really do because it is a special thing when you find the person you love, and you know, you, it sucks that you just spread yourself thin. So I, I I'm glad the guy did it, but then it ain't cool. To stand on that and no, be like, "Hey, I'm no. a virgin. I'm gonna save myself." To now you're on this like you know high horse yeah. about it. No, you yeah. can't. You can't. You can't be all virtuous and I save myself for you, and then all of a sudden, well, that's not fair to me. Right? No, no. cannot do. No, that. dude, that's not the way it's it works. Not cool, and, and it's not cool to put pressure on her like no. that, like making her feel guilty about it. Right? That's bullshit. It is, and and she feels like she's against the wall. Like if I if I don't let him. He's going to go do it behind my back anyway because he's so curious. I can see it in his eyes. Right, know? yeah, right. It's just it's just him discovering what he just did. Yeah. And now there's all this this world out there he never saw before. Right. And he thinks I've mastered you. <laughs> you know, I, I've done, you know, I'm I've done all there is to do with you. Let me go see what it's like to be with somebody else. I'll come back. I, you know, I'm I'm yours. You know that. Right. If you're mine, stay here. You know, you don't have to do that. And shouldn't do that. No, and shouldn't. Don't, don't, don't. You're, you're worth more than that. Bottom line is, I mean, again, we don't know how old these are and the details right. or, or whatever, but fuck him. If exactly. He, if that's fuck the him. way he absolutely feels, fuck him. Yep. Just and, let him let him go. Uh, honestly, you know, you and I have daughters. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. If a guy said that to our daughters, I'd be like, no, he ain't, good. He, ain't the, he ain't the guy for you. Nope. And uh, sorry about his luck, you know. Uh, that's right. And if this girl, that's the way she should feel. She should look at this like, well, okay, what if uh, this was my daughter coming to me with this? And whether she has a daughter or not. Right. Think in those put, terms. Think in those terms. That's right. What would I? What advice would I give her? Yeah, tell the guy to go do it, you know, so is Wild Oats after he fell in love. Who does that? No. Yeah. You, you, he got it backwards. I mean, he, he decided to do it that way, which is fine. Yeah. But then, again, don't stand on the soapbox and then all of a sudden. Now, what about this? Hold her to it. 
what if this dude didn't choose not to get laid? What if he was a nerd? She picked him out, dusted him off, took his glasses off, put contacts in him, put some <laughs> hair product in his hair, what? made him look fuckable, <laughs> taught him how to fuck. <laughs> right. And now he's wanting to go yeah. bang the world because he, right. he couldn't get laid before her. Right. Screw that dude. No, fuck him. Yeah. That's just it. I mean, this is going to be a short one. It's just the end of the story. Again, I agree. It's just, you know, no. Don't put yourself, you're worth more than that. Don't put yourself and fall for that bullshit. It's nonsense. It's bullshit. Right. He just, he, like you said, and that's probably the case. I mean, I don't know about nerd or whatever, but it's it sounds like the, the way she wrote it, and again, it doesn't say that. It's just, I'm, it's implied that he's, he's, saved himself but i don't think he did right i think you're absolutely right in one sense or the other he just got laid then and yeah. now he's experienced he it was and too now scared or whatever he was too scared or whatever shy whatever it may have been now he's gotten used to it and they've probably done it a couple hundred yes. times or whatever it is yep and he's like hey there's more fish in the sea yeah now i'm not scared now i know what to expect now i know how everything works yeah. and then i have all these experiences you were my the- crash test done exactly so fuck him bottom yep. line fuck him yeah fuck him <laughs> anyway and we're right on this one i don't know what they answered but we're right yeah absolutely yep. uh, yeah we have no idea what these answers are but yeah th- these were fun i mean we had a we had probably i don't know five or six more I love this i hope you guys liked it too cause uh, i want to do this again yeah i really do hopefully so yes please leave us uh you know i mean i know we have kind of an older crowd but there may be some younger people yeah creeping in here and there because we talk about a lot of cool stuff and there's no we're we're no holds barred there's no rules here we talk about anything and everything and uh we thought this would be fun we had mentioned it a couple months ago and then kind of got off and and did some other things but leave us comments you know seriously like if you actually need advice or like james mentioned earlier email us and we'll you know and you can say remain anonymous or whatever it is and again, we're not professionals. We're having fun with it, but at the same time, we are we g- hope. G- giving serious advice. And yeah. you know, because we, we we do have a little bit of experience in these in these realms. Um, so yeah, th- but these are fun to do, and so we'll do it in an entertaining way. <laughs> I love I love this I love this one. So yeah, let us know for sure in the comments. Do you like this format, this kind of thing, or this advice idea? And would you like to hear more of these? Let us know. And uh, again, if you're listening on. SoundCloud or Google Play or iTunes or Spotify or Podbean. Uh, give us a rating there if you don't mind. I really appreciate it. It helps us out. Uh, but be sure to subscribe on the YouTube channel. That's where we definitely uh, will be adding video uh, soon. Yep. Uh, when I say soon, we're talking probably months down the road, but we're going to be adding video once we get into a actual studio. And I keep mentioning this for in case new people are coming in. So you'll see me and James and Riddick, the studio dog, and even yes. Cat Hole running around <laughs> yes. uh, in the studio. So that'll happen. And uh, But, yeah, YouTube is where we read every single comment and at least uh, heart it, if not respond to it. But, yeah, let us know what you think. Uh, this was fun. This was I, cool. I've had a blast. And I, I'm curious to I, – I, we need to go back now and look at the answers. Yeah, I know. Just to see what they I'm said. In a Because, perfe- you know, they're professional doctors and shit. Yeah. Yep. Well, I want to see how the PhDs answered any differently from us. I'd love to know. That'd be curious to know. So So anyway, yeah, I, I guess I'll, I'll leave a link to that video – or that not video, the article or the website, whatever it is – uh, in the video description on YouTube, just in case anybody wants to read these and see what the answers are too. But I'm going to go back and read the answers. Yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> I want to see what they say. I bet you it's pretty fucking close. It's got to be, or they don't have much life experience. Exactly. Maybe they're they really young doctors what who a just, book says. They, what a bo- exactly. Yeah. Well, exactly what I was going to say. They just, what does the clinical book say to say yeah. in this situation? Uh, there is no substitute for experience. There's not a PhD will not fuck with experience. Period. That's right. Now, I, I, again, I don't know who these people are. I didn't even read the answers, but I, I'm curious. I am too, and I'm I'm curious to see what these people think. I hope we end up doing these again. Yeah, I hope so. So yeah, let us know what you think and and leave uh leave questions and or email them whichever way you want to do it, and we'll do it again. And uh, anyway. So we'll leave it there. I think we're we're probably this might be one of our longest ones, but we could have went on for another couple yeah, hours. Definitely here. could have. 
Anyway, let us know what you think, uh, and we'll see you next week. And I'm not sure exactly what we're doing. Maybe we're doing more advice. Yeah, I, hope I, so. I don't know. I do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, as usual, we'll just let it fade fuck to black. That virgin. <laughs> yeah, fuck that dude. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's not fair. You had four partners, and I've just had one. <laughs> I'm worth four. <laughs>